drawing mistakes. <laughs> Never an excuse. Always a reason. Hello and welcome to another video. Today is going to be part one of the two-parter. Um, it's going to be focusing on a bad drawing mistake that I made. Uh, so let's figure out where I went wrong. So why do I say there's uh, no excuses for a drawing mistake? I, I certainly don't mean it like a bullying, oh you bad artist, no excuse. No, I, I literally mean we don't excuse it. Usually when we uh, make excuses for something, it's because we're accepting it. And that's usually because we're, we're being a bit fear-based. We're, we're letting the intimidation of that mistake get the best of us. And that's going to make it a habit. Uh, and that's going to stop us from growing. So in, in, in our pursuit as artists, we want to grow. That's, that's the goal of every artist I know. If we figure out the reason for the mistake, we can correct it. If we make excuses, we often don't do that. So, uh, so don't excuse it. Don't let it live in your game. Uh, figure out the reason for it. Just check yourself. Uh, go inside, do some analysis, uh, some critical thinking. Observe what you did. Why did I make that decision? What, what, what caused me to do that? You'll find the reason for the mistake. And when you do, you can correct it. You can make that project better and you can carry that forward into other projects and not make that same mistake again. And all you have to look forward to then is making all new mistakes that you'll have to figure out the reasons for. <laughs> and, uh, and that used to intimidate me as well. But it doesn't anymore. I actually embrace the mistakes now. I find it fun, actually, which I know sounds weird on the surface. But the reality is, if I do that process I just talked about, if I, if I go into my analysis and, and critically think my way through and remember the choices I made, I'll find the reason for the mistake and I will grow. And when I notice that I'm growing, um, which I don't as often as I'd like, I need to get more attentive about that. But when I do, it's exhilarating when, because I realize I'm succeeding in my goal. I'm becoming a better artist. And that's just a euphoria that I can't describe. And so mistakes don't worry me anymore. I actually go into paintings nowadays kind of looking for them, hoping I make the mistakes and, and really trying to be attentive to my process so I catch them when I make them and figure out why I made them. So the reasons are always important. And in this case, I, I made uh, my model's head a little bit too small on this painting initially, and that was a serious mistake. It screwed up the whole composition. It, it messed the emotional value. Uh, she just didn't have the presence on the canvas she needed to have. And I didn't phone it in. I wasn't being lazy. I did all the right things. I was, I was really measuring uh, the angle of her face, the spacing of her features, the opposing angle of the shoulder, everything I needed to be doing, I wasn't being sloppy. I just made an initial mistake that led to every one of those measurements not mattering uh, because I made her head too small. I drew it well within its own size, but it was just too small. And the reason was because I didn't stand back from my canvas and the reason for that was because of my camera. I have an overhead camera rig I built in my studio and the camera hangs about yonder. And uh, I, it's just hard for me to get in and out without bumping it. It's a, it's a little bit tight. And the reason why it's there is because I'm just trying to reduce the distortion for the viewer in the video. Uh, I don't want the camera on too much of an angle because then the, the there's so much distortion on the painting that's hard for you to see what I'm doing. So I, I try to square it off as much as I can. And I found the balance point. If I bring it over too far, my knobby head gets in the way. And if I bring it too far that way, it's too distorted. And so I've got this balance point that's just a little bit awkward to get in and out of my space with. I just kind of let it boss me around and I didn't stand back. The sad thing is that I knew there was something wrong. I could feel it. It was bugging me. I just couldn't place it because I was drawing the individual features accurately. So I couldn't, I couldn't put my thumb on it. And sometimes it's only standing back that's going to cure your issue. And the reason why that is because we get into painting, we start microscoping, we start tunnel visioning. Some people call it getting blinders on. Uh, we actually get blind to our painting, people will say. And it's all true. Uh, and the thing is that we're, we're focusing on those little things that we're, we're dealing with and we start to lose the overall context. So we start to lose this shape relating to that shape, which relates to that one. And that's all the drawing. And if one of those shapes isn't right, it's going to screw the whole thing off. So when you stand back, you sort of break that literal chain, that tunnel vision gets disrupted and you see your painting with fresh eyes and you can spot things pretty quickly. 
Other people sometimes use mirrors uh, to see it. They'll flip their paintings upside down. If you're really, really stuck, I encourage you to call in a friend, uh, get another artist to come in to look at it because those fresh eyes usually spot a problem pretty quick and you could be quite locked and can't see it and then they'll come in and go, oh, that's that thing and you'll be like, really? Uh, but it's good, it's good to have that happen because now you know. And uh, for me, the first line of defense is that standing back. So I was getting bugged enough and bugged enough that I finally just stood back. I thought, forget the camera, just stand back. And the second I turned around and looked at it from eight feet away, I was like, oh my God. Wow, how could you not have noticed that? That is so obvious. And I also remembered the moment when I made the mistake, which was right ironically at the very beginning. I made a little uh, cross hatch, a vertical and horizontal cross hatch, uh, just so I could space where I wanted her head to be. And the reason I didn't notice that I put one of those tick marks in the wrong spot is the second issue that I was dealing with was the camera itself. I used my iPhone to shoot and it was acting very glitchy. And the principal problem I was having with it was that it was still recording, but everything was frozen. The audio was frozen, the video, everything. And I wouldn't know that because the red light was still on. So I would look back and go, okay, because I was having dropped footage all the time. So I was getting into the habit of looking back at it and going, okay, it's still going, but it actually wasn't. So I started realizing I had to wave my hand in front. And if I could see my hand, I knew it was still recording. And if I couldn't see my hand, I knew it was frozen. And it was starting to happen so much and so frequently with no warning that by the time I got to this painting, I was just literally every few brushstrokes, you know, waving, you know, her, her. it was like quite panicky and incredibly distracting. And I remember clear as a bell that one of those wavy times I put a tick mark in. And I'm sure even as I demonstrate it, you can see I was not doing my job. That tick mark, how could I put it in the right place? Everything in me was back here, not there. So when I stood back and saw all of this and all of that knowledge flooded into me, the decision is very, very quick. How do I fix it? Well, I don't let that be a problem anymore. I know when I go into part two, which I'll post tomorrow, it's successful because I didn't let the camera distract me. I made a clear decision. When I'm back here doing my little knobby head waving thing, that's the camera, man. The second I'm done waving and I'm into here, now I'm the painter. And if I stop filming, whatever, too bad. Tough nuts. It doesn't matter anymore. Uh, this is what matters. So I do the passage I'm working on and then I come back and go, okay, yep, good. So there's a clear switch of attention. So instead of dragging one from the other, it was a clear separation and that made all the difference in the world. Also, pretty much every time I checked the camera, I would also get out of the chair and look at the painting from a distance so I could just correct things quickly. And it just made everything go the way it was supposed to go. So a bit of a rookie mistake there because I've been standing back for a good 12 or so years in my practice because I know how valuable it is. So there was a moment of frustration. I, I got pouty, um, definitely uh, self-indulgent for, for a few minutes. But once I got over the just sheer frustrated annoyance of that mistake, the critical thinking kicked in and I was like, okay, enough of that self-indulgent nonsense now, focus on the task at hand. What did you do wrong? How did you do it? And how are you going to fix it? Kicking that gear over makes all the difference. So I hope that's a value to you and helps you if you've been making mistakes. But the other thing that I would stress and, and focus on is, is what I'd said earlier about uh, the joy of the mistakes themselves teaching you. So it, it, a lot of the times I make mistakes in this game because I, I fall into a bit of a fear-based thinking. And it's, it's just kind of silly because the, the mistakes are what make me better. They really are. I couldn't, I couldn't emphasize that point enough. So I, I embrace them now. I truly do. Uh, the self-indulgent part of me doesn't last long, to be honest, because it, it's just more amused now than anything. I just kind of go, oh my God. All right, buddy, tighten up now. What do you got to do? And it's fun. It's actually fun because I know it's leading me to a good place. So I hope that's of use to you. And let's move on into the painting. Okay, so here's the reference photo that I'm going to be working from uh, for this painting, and I'm just focusing on this area of it here. I could have cropped the photo, but I don't uh, bother. I like the extra drawing challenge, uh, ironic as this video would turn out to be. Uh, the reason I like to do these little um, more focused head studies is because if I use that full reference, I'm doing a painting, say, let's call this one 36 inches by 24 inches is what I'll probably do. Uh, her head is going to be quite a bit smaller in that space. Um, so I like to do the devoted head study so that I can travel uh, the features, I can, I can check out that geography, 
and I understand what's going to need to be edited out at a smaller size because when it's smaller you can't include everything that you want to include and be as detailed as you want to be um, and uh, so that's why I like to do these head studies for the most part and just notice that little crosshatch that I did in the center uh, what I was talking about before is that horizontal uh, crosshatch is about an inch to an inch and a half too high and that accounts for all of these issues. Now, her face is looking okay, as I said in the beginning of the video. Um, the features are measuring up nicely uh, one to another for the size of that particular head. But you can see uh, comparatively that it's just not right. I had been convincing myself at this point, blocking in the hair as a mass and stuff, that I hadn't made a mistake, that the features were good, everything was lining up. But it's really when I block in uh, her dress that you can see just how undersized her head is. Um, and that's that's when it started to really subliminally bother me. I, I just knew in my gut something was wrong, even though I wasn't taking the time to visually double check it. So that's uh, that's really the, the heart and soul of this mistake right there. Um, I, I carry on for a little while, um, just trying to fill in all the different areas, balancing them, uh, trying to do a little bit more feature work uh, going back into the hair here, trying to see if that was the, the problem, if I just blocked in a heavier value mass, if that would sort of balance things out and improve it and set it up more properly. Because uh, I, you can see I'm refining the outline of her face right here. And I was doing that because it, all those features just lined up nicely. The, the face was accurate and the features were coming into place. And so I was convincing myself, in spite of this ominous feeling in my gut, that the drawing was okay. But I just give up right, just in, in a couple more brush strokes, I think I finally get fed up uh, and just go, no, this is, yeah, there we go. Yeah, it's wrong. Uh, so the little X was just a, a sign to, actually, I just said, you know, the viewers need to know this is wrong. So I just stuck up the X. Uh, so look at that little mark there. Uh, that's a dead center of the canvas. You can see that's that's a solid inch or inch and a quarter lower than where it was. So so that allows for a lot more room for her face to take up its proper compositional place. Uh, so that's that's the the need in in real time for um, paying deeper attention when you paint. Um, I think I said it in my barn video. Uh, that uh, you shouldn't be touching your painting unless you know what you're doing. Uh, so fiddling with the camera like I was and trying to establish a measurement mark is just the height of foolishness. <laughs> so so that's a lesson learned a million times over. Uh, I'm not going to make that mistake again. Hopefully. <laughs> uh, we'll see. Time will be the test. All right. Uh, I, I, don't, I can't really say too much more about this. You're just going to notice some, some measuring marks. Um, because I'm taking things a lot more seriously at this point and really focusing like I should have been. Um, and so what you're going to notice uh, is times when I extend my arm towards the reference and then pivot back to the canvas. So just a quick little tip there for those who've never used this technique before is that the the brush is a very good measuring tool. It's it's You can use it as a straight edge. So But if you're going to do that, you need to fully extend your arm and lock that elbow and then just pivot your wrist uh, to the angle you need, lock it, and then just pivot at the hip back to your painting. So you need to be able to far, be far enough back from your painting that you can pivot without moving or unlocking your elbow. Because the second you unlock the elbow, you're gonna change the angle of your wrist guaranteed, and you're gonna put the wrong uh, measurement in. So make sure you're far enough back that you can actually lock that elbow. All right, uh, we'll talk to you um, a little bit down the road.
Thanks for joining me. Uh, I will put up a little bit of a preview uh, for how tomorrow's gonna go. So you can look forward to that, a little bit of a teaser there. So just as that plays, I would just say thank you again for joining me. Uh, I will see you in the next video, I hope. Uh, if you like what I'm doing, hit me up with the like and the subscribe and the bell buttons and all that stuff. Um, that really helps me grow in, in YouTube's algorithm, so I appreciate that. And uh, put miles on your brush. Uh, nothing teaches you to paint more than painting itself, as I've said before. Uh, so it, it, seek out teaching wherever you can. Go to workshops, uh, check out tutorials, all these things. But don't let those take the place of putting miles on your own brush because painting is what's going to teach you. Thanks very much. Have a good day and we'll see you soon.